Hello? Hello. It is time for the show. We're back. I'm back. Your co-host, Jared Borislow, is back. Jared, how is your back? You ever had back problems? Uh, yeah, from carrying this podcast on my back every day. Wow. Yeah. You really came out of the gate swinging today. Yep. I, I can respect that. I can respect that. That's one of the things, like a rite of passage that I'm not looking forward to at some point, like having to become a bat guy, my first trip to the chiropractor. So far, so good on the backside uh, of things. But mentally, we need a few doctors a month to keep old Bill's brain pumping. Uh, before we get into today's show, Jared, you know what else helps the old body and brain? I think I do. Liquid IV! Liquid IV. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Liquid IV. Jared and I push ourselves to the absolute limit every week by recording many hours of podcast, gaming hard with sweaty listeners, and making as much love as humanly possible. When we push our bodies hard, or we're just feeling run down, it's extremely important to take care of ourselves with the proper vitamins and nutrients, and that's where Liquid IV created Hydration Multiplier Plus Immune Support. To maintain and strengthen your immune system, I usually have one first thing in the morning before or after a workout. I replace that 3 p.m. coffee with one of these puppies, too, for funsies. Jared, you and I might be at this point the biggest Liquid IV fans in the world. No cap, as they say. I literally, a lot of people are like, oh, these podcasters, they probably don't use these products. I drink at least one Liquid IV every day. My favorite literally. flavor is tangerine, which is the one we're talking about, Hydration Plus Immune Support. I also enjoy immune strawberry, support. which is regular hydration multiplier, the God, lemon yeah. ginger energy multiplier. Liquid IV Liquid keeps IV. me fueled. My entire bloodstream Fuel. is just full of Liquid IV these days. Oh. That's it. That's all it's in there. No blood. Oh, yeah. Hydration Multiplier Plus Immune Support is a cutting-edge blend of vitamin C, zinc, and well-immune and convenient single-serving packets to help strengthen your immune system. Vitamin C is well-known to help protect your body and support good health. Zinc. The second most abundant trace mineral in your body supports immune cell health and function. Wellmune is a naturally sourced beta-glucan that's proven to help strengthen your immune system. Each packet is bursting with fresh natural tangerine flavor. It tastes so good. Liquid IV can provide two to three times more hydration than water alone. And when you purchase Liquid IV, you're joining their mission to help people uh, live better lives everywhere. With each purchase, Liquid IV donates a serving of Liquid IV to someone in need. They've donated four plus million servings in response to COVID-19. Products are being donated to hospitals, first responders, food banks, veterans, and active military. Over 10 million servings globally they've donated. Everybody drinks. Yeah. Get your Liquid IV hydration multiplier plus immune support in bulk at Costco or order online and get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code ROSS at checkout. That's 25% off anything when you order online at liquidiv.com. Get better hydration today using promo code ROSS, R-O-S-S, at liquidiv.com. Yeah, that's an incredible deal. Hmm. Right? 25%? That's a fourth. Yes. One fourth, Jared. Buy four, get one free. By God, sir, what a deal! ROSS Highly recommend. Is the code. If you are like me, and your brain forgets to drink water a lot, like daily, this stuff. You're either very busy or very stupid. Could be yeah. either or both. Yes, I'm. I'm both. And you need liquid IV. I literally need it. It's like they say, one glass of liquid IV is like three glasses of water. Yeah. Need it. Yeah. Need it. All right. First topic today, Jared. Yes. Every Monday, everyone knows. We open our show by recognizing those we lost the week prior to din to gender-revealing disasters. It has seriously become one of this podcast's major missions to stop gender-reveal parties or celebrations, which are in actuality death traps. This week's headline from ABC News. Two people are dead after a plane involved in a gender-reveal stunt in Mexico crashed into the water. So... Just off the headline alone, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Because I assume both just instantly that the parents are dead, that everybody's dead. Now there's not even going to be a baby. That's what I assumed. Uh, okay. It's not the case, though. I'm, it is not as bleak as it seems. I'm assuming it's like they hired Here you a, go, Jared. an airplane yeah. to do that. I, I imagine like oh yeah, the dad or the mom's not going to be flying the airplane. That seems like a bit much. <sighs> I, I, I was worried that that was the case, though, because people go bonkers with these things, man. They go... And do a bit much. Uh, this is, again, ABC News. The incident occurred Monday afternoon uh, in Cancun, according to Quentin Quintana Roo Nautical Associates, a private nautical business associated that said it assisted in the rescue mission. A video of the gender reveal shows the plane flying over the beach, emitting a pink smoke as people cheer and shout, Nina! Oh, I'm sorry, Nina. Yes. <laughs> There's no damn, where's my Tilde. squiggly line you, above you my end? What the hell is this? Spanish for girl. Uh, the camera then pans around and captures the small aircraft as it crashes into the water. 
In the footage they captured being like, yeah, a girl. The plane goes down. Wait. Yes. So you're saying it's like in the footage. Yeah, it's a girl. And the, and the camera. Go, pink smoke, pink smoke, family celebrating, plane into the water. This is maybe the most insane story yet. It's the most ominous foreshadowing in the history of human life. This girl is likely the Antichrist. Okay, do we have more information as to how this plane went down? That's what's really confusing me. The Let me plane... get deeper into this ABC News story, Jared. Okay. Okay, one person died during the crash. A second person died after being rescued, the Attorney General's office in Quintana Roo stated uh, to ABC News on Thursday. The deceased passengers have not been identified by authorities. I find that to be mildly concerning, seeing as that I looked up this information this morning. It is now Monday, and this happened last Thursday. Uh, again... This is the latest fatal accident and plane crash connected with gender reveal parties. In February, a 28-year-old New York man was killed when a device he was building for his baby's gender reveal party exploded. In October 2019, a soon-to-be grandmother died in Iowa when a gender reveal device exploded and sent shrapnel flying. Also in 2019, an airplane crashed in Texas after the pilot dumped about 350 gallons of pink water. Authorities said both passengers survived, only suffering minor injuries. I mean... We're done here. I'll say it for the last and final time. Walk away from these gender reveal death traps. People are dying. Week in, week out. How many more? How many more lives? Just so you can have a fucking Instagram video. The plane goes down in the back. How do they not know the identity of the people flying? That's what I don't get. Like This whole thing's fishy now. Clearly the people, the parents, if they weren't the ones who died know who these people are what are they this is just a happenstance the plane flew by with pink smoke <laughs> you know how it is they won't release the identity of people and shit no i really don't know why it says authorities haven't identified them yeah that doesn't make sense to me do the parents not know who was in charge of their gender reveal yeah they approached us in the street and said hey you look you look pregnant we, we got you we got we got you just we got you give us a few thousand pesos and we'll make this happen you go sit on that beach over there we're gonna give you the show of a fucking lifetime if you guys happen to have the envelope on you that, that tells you what the gender is and that, that you haven't opened yet. Because yeah. that's how that works, <laughs> yes, by the way. Yeah. You go to the store and you say, here's my baby's envelope. And they, they look at it and they say, boy or girl. And then they go make you a pink or a blue thing that explodes and kills you or your family. That's the game. That's the business of gender revealing. And it's got to be stopped. You, you Stop actually, revealing genders. You had a, a statistic recently that you came across in your brain that you made up but it might be true what was it you said that every year oh yeah every year more people die to gender reveal disasters than babies are born into the united states is the thing i made up that's true maybe but also that i made up yes which is it's still just as is impactful i feel yes you know stop Gender reveals. Stop, Stop revealing gender reveals. the genders. I'm serious. If you were invited to one right now and they were like, J-Bone, uh, yeah. So they're like, yeah, you got to come by. We're going to reveal this gender. And and they were and you were like, so what's the, how are you going to do it? Is it like a cake that you're going to cut? And they were like, no, 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 no. We got a cannon and it's going to fucking shoot out a cannonball that's one of the colors because this is realistic. Like this could happen. Very, very possible. You're in the age where people are popping out kids. Mm-hmm. Uh what would you do? Would you, would, you, would, you, would you go? Would you support the revealing of this gender? Here's what I'd do. I'd get the event not to happen by calling in a bomb threat. That Saving would not even lives. It wouldn't even be a fake bomb threat. No, it'd be realistic. It's a real bomb threat I'm calling in. This is how we solve this. We refuse to go as a community to any, gen- any gender reveal parties, and we agree collectively as a community to call in bomb threats to every single gender reveal party we become made aware of. Yes. That's how we stop this. Who's who's with me? <laughs> Who wants to go to jail for? for it's a cr- it's for incredible. Fi- for fi- they show up and they're like, "Where's the bomb?" And they're like, "No, There's... we're doing the cake one. We're don't worry. Get down!" They fucking send in a robot to deal with the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm serious though. All right, so this this is like year three of this joke, and and the first one it was like. It was a real joke, and now it's a joke that's also like kind of fucked up because people keep dying at gender reveal parties, and I, can't, I can't make sense of it. I just stop revealing the genders. Stop it. Just stop it. Next segment. Grab your light. This is stop the Wikipedia when you high. Stop the Wikipedia when you're high.
Good stuff. Love that theme music. All right, so today's S-T-W-W-Y-H, if you will, is George Edward Waddell, W-A-D-D-E-L-L. This is one of the best examples of incredible Wikipedia pages I've ever seen. Uh, thankfully, Twitter exists, and somebody who f- said this dude, George Ed Waddell, is his favorite baseball player, favorite professional athlete ever, went viral talking about him over the weekend. And I looked him up, and I was just like, oh, my sweet God. So we just have to read from it because it's there's no way I can even justify, like, I, I can't do justice to this. Yeah, we had listeners also sending in messages being like, you need to cover this. You story. have to get this guy. You have to do this guy. This is insane. So he was uh, born October 13th, 1876. He died April 1st, April Fool's Day, which is why he came up recently four days ago, April Fool's Day. Also, my mom's birthday. Also, Bella's birthday. Happy birthday to both. Many people's birthday. Happy birthday to everyone who was born on April Fool's. He was an American Southpaw pitcher in Major League Baseball, the MLB. He had a career spanning 13 years. He played for the... Louisville Colonels, Pittsburgh Pirates, Chicago Orphans in the National League, which was a real team, as well as the Philadelphia Athletics and St. Louis Browns in the American League. He was born in Bradford, Pennsylvania, and elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1946, most remembered for his highly eccentric behavior, which is going to be the main thing we talk about during this segment, and for being a remarkably dominant strikeout pitcher in an era when mostly batters slapped at the ball to get singles. Guys weren't striking out a whole lot. Uh, he had an excellent fastball, a sharp breaking curveball, a screwball, superb control. His strikeout to walk ratio was almost three to one. He led the majors in strikeouts for six consecutive years. Now let's get into what makes him weird as hell, because there's a lot here. Uh, Waddle was okay again, Pennsylvania guy. Grows up in the countryside. A biographer wrote that he was, quote, a decidedly different sort of child, end quote. At the age of three, he wandered over to a local fire station and stayed there for several days. He did not attend school very often. These are sentences one after the other. Not edited. Okay, at the age of three, he wandered over to a local fire station, stayed there for several days. He did not attend school very often. He strengthened his arm as a child by throwing rocks at birds he encountered while working on his family's land. He also worked on a mining and drilling site as a youngster, which helped his conditioning. So his career at baseball starts with a number of teams. He's noticeably, notably unpredictable early in his career. He would often leave in the middle of a game to go fishing. Okay. He's making his way up through the minors, trying to become a professional pitcher. And in the middle of games, he would leave to go fishing. How often? It says he would often do this. How often can you do this before people are like, dude, you're off the team? Often enough. Apparently, he also had a long-standing fascination with fire trucks and had run off the field to chase after them during games on multiple occasions. Presumably because he had that stint in the fire station as a youngster and he just loves fire trucks. Fascination from a young age. Okay. Nature versus nurture, Todd. What's your name? Nature always wins. He would disappear for months at a time during the offseason and it was not known where he went until it was discovered that he was wrestling alligators in a circus. He was easily distracted by opposing fans who held up puppies, which caused him to run over to play with them, and shiny objects, which seemed to put him in a trance. (laughs) Okay. An alcoholic for much of his short life, Waddle reportedly spent his entire first signing bonus on a drinking bench, which Sporting News called him a sousepaw. Like sauce? Saucepaw. Saucepaw? Like lost in the sauce? Yeah, like Manziel. His eccentric behavior led to constant battles with his managers and scuffles with bad-tempered teammates. Well, yeah, if you keep leaving in mid-game to go wrestle alligators and fish, people are going to get upset. You know, your teammates. I want to see him be in a trance by a shiny object. This is time back to hypnotists, which we recently spoke about. Yeah, we did. We recently did. Uh, Okay, so he returns to his family's home in Pennsylvania, plays with local football clubs there, plays with various football teams later in his years, has a brief stint as a goalkeeper in the St. Louis Soccer League. I have no idea why. But in his prime, he was the game's premier power pitcher with 302 strikeouts in 1903, 115 more than runner-up Bill Donovan, which is insane. According to baseball historian Lee Allen in the American League story, Waddle began the 1903 season sleeping in a firehouse at Camden, New Jersey, and ended it tending bar at a saloon in Wheeling, West Virginia. In between those events, he won 22 games for the Philadelphia Athletics, toured the nation in a vaudeville play called The Stain of Guilt, courted married, and became separated from May Wynn Skinner of Lynn, Massachusetts, saved a woman from drowning, accidentally shot a friend through the hand, and 
was bitten by a lion. Getting Dick Cheney vibes from this guy. Yeah, what? He shot his friend through the hand, was bitten by a lion. Was Cheney a bartender. Got, Cheney got bit by a lion? No, <laughs> maybe. Did you watch Vice recently? No, is it good? Yeah, it's solid. Is Christian Bale? Yeah. Dick Cheney? He just puts on like fucking 200 pounds. It's tight. Uh, I like that he was in a vaudeville play. Hey, Ross, I think vaudeville needs to come back. What do you think about that? Bill Waddle did vaudeville. <laughs> it also reminds me of Terrence and Phillip yeah, from South Park. they are vaudeville. They have a vaudeville vibe that, that a lot of people probably don't recognize mm-hmm. that, but that's what that is. Canada slash vaudeville slash heads that have two halves and bounce up and down. Anyway, back to Waddle. His name is phenomenal, too. That's the thing. So in 1905, he won a triple crown. He finished with a 27-10 win-loss record, 287 strikeouts, 1.4 ERA. Uh, his fourth consecutive season to finish with 20 or more wins, which, again, is really, 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 really good. And at this time, he was sharing a room with teammate Aussie Schreckengost, as was customary during the era. And Schreckengost later refused to share the room until a contract clause was created, which would stop Waddle from eating crackers in bed. <laughs> That's kind of a psycho move to eat crackers in bed. With a roommate. And in general. And in general. They're crumbly. Crumbly snacks, no bed. Like No bed. They're literally the crumbliest snack I can think of. Imagine eating saltines. Those are those things are crumbled before you even get them out of the packet. Waddle, it's dead silent, pitch black. I'm imagining it's like a dorm room, too, because it's the fucking 40s. And Waddle's like three feet away from his roommate, just... Yeah, just the slow crunch, just letting him hear it. Psycho move, dude. This guy was a psycho. They wanted to put into his professional contract that, that he, he couldn't <laughs> eat crackers in bed. I don't think you can. I don't think you can put that in. He also gained more fame for saving the lives of people inside a department store when he picked up a burning oil stove that had overturned and carried it out of the building before it could start a fire. <laughs> what? Here's my favorite part. <laughs> out of everything we've said, and again, I'm not making any of this up. Waddle enjoyed. Waving his teammates off the field and then striking out the side. So essentially, they'd be coming out for the inning and he'd be like, nah, nah, fuck that. Y'all stay in the dugout, which is not a thing anybody has ever done since. And then he would strike out the side, which is the most disrespectful, incredibly dominant thing I've ever heard in sports. It'd be like if coming out at halftime, one of the guys on a basketball team was like, nah, nah, I got this. Y'all chill and played one on five. Like, that's how cocky that is. If anyone makes contact, he's the only fielder. He has to go get the ball. And then he strikes out the side. It's the coolest thing I've ever heard anyone do, I think. Ever. In anything. Sports, business, life. The business of sports is life, some might say. This is the cockiest move in the history of sports. Yes. He would wave his teammates off the field and strike out the side. And the game should end right there. If you can, that's a new baseball rule. I know we haven't added one in a while to America's pastime. But the new rule is if your pitcher wants to make the gamble of leaving everyone else in the dugout and he can strike out the side, the game is over. So if your team's down like 9-2 and you're like, shit, I don't think we can make this comeback. There's only one and a half innings left or something. Then you do this. Everybody gets a thrill. It's amazing. Now we need the red zone channel that's this for baseball. And it just cuts to every one of these risks being taken. I just saved baseball as a sport. You did. And I, I like help this, of Waddle. I like this story because if you keep reading, it gets even more bizarre somehow with this with this crazy like shtick. Share. Share this part. Okay. So he actually only did this in exhibition games because official baseball rules prohibit playing with fewer than nine men on the field in regulation play. But in a league game in Detroit, so where this was a rule, uh-huh. he wanted to still do it. So he had his outfielders come in close and sit down on the grass to watch him strike out the side. No way. <laughs> guys, guys, all right, we can't leave the field. They'll cancel the game. But just come take a seat. Come take, Fellas, come take a seat. Everybody come take a seat. Everybody sit down. It's story time. And then he just goes back to pitching and strikes out the side. Once. The Imagine st- going up to bat and the guy's like, no, nah, all right, everybody come chill. I got this. I'd just go back to the dugout, bro. I'm not letting that man pitch to me. The stunt almost backfired once, Ross. Uh Uh-oh. Pitching an exhibition game in Memphis, he took the field alone, (laughs) 
with his catcher, Doc Powers, for the final three innings of the game. Bro, his catcher's name was Doc Powers. Come on. That's a very strong name. It is. With two out in the ninth, so he had already made it to the top, or, you know, the end of the ninth inning, two He's outs. one out away. One out away. Powers dropped the third strike, allowing the batter to reach first. The next two hitters blooped pop flies that fell just behind the mound. Oh, shit. Despite running himself ragged, Waddle subsequently struck out the last man. <laughs> so he's running around the field like a fucking maniac. Guys are hitting pop flies. His catcher drops a strike probably because he's drunk. And <laughs> I just imagine they're all drunk, right? These guys just drank. They have to. That's what everybody in the 40s was doing. Now that you go back and watch Mad Men. Um, he's running around like a maniac, and then he finally gets the strike out, and he's just like, fuck. Oh, God. Maybe that's the last time. <sighs> Dude, I can't believe his catcher's name was dope. Doc Powers? We need to find a guy named Doc, or a, la- a lass, a lady, could be either. Just, we need a Doc in our yeah. lives. There's the dwarf named Doc, right? From from the TV show, yep. I'm, not, I'm not just... Oh, no, I know, from seven, Snow White and the Seven yeah. Dwarfs. Sleepy, dopey, dummy. Sneezy? Sneezy, sleazy, Doc. <laughs> Easy, breezy. Yeezy. Beautiful cover girl. <laughs> Yeezus. Yeah, you remember. Man, I haven't watched that one in a while. It's a little creepy. Is it? Snow White and the Seven Drawers is a little creepy. Seven drawers. Seven. <laughs> seven drawers. <laughs> Which one will you open? <laughs> anyway, is that not the best athlete you've you never heard of this dude? Had you? No. Me neither. Thank you, Twitter. The best. Maybe of all time in any sport. Thank God he's in the Hall of Fame. That's kind of the coolest part about it. He's actually in the Hall of Fame. He needs like, a whole room. They, they legitimately, yeah. His name is Rube, by the way. R U B E is what the Rube Waddle is what, what he went by. It wasn't George Edward Waddle, you know. All the back again. That's like an old school thing. I feel like early America, people just had their legal name, and then it was like what you actually fucking called them. Yeah. Rube. Where did Rube come from? George Edward. I mean. I know Rube is like an insult. It's like a name for a country bumpkin. You call him a Rube. Maybe that's what it was. Just straight up. But also Rube Goldberg is the name of those machines where like you knock a domino over and then five minutes later, like a uh, it pours you a beer. So I don't know. We don't why don't we have anybody like this? Like this is the thing we're missing right now in baseball. Is like the a pitcher who's just so insane that every single one of his games is worth tuning into. Because he's completely nuts. Zach Greinke is kind of like that. Greinke, he's the closest thing we have comparable to Waddle. Trevor Bauer. <laughs> he's just crazy online. But it's been a minute since we had one that was like a full-blown lunatic on the field. John Rocker, noted racist in total peace. But, come on, even as an Astros fan, I couldn't argue that Rocker wasn't entertaining. He sprinted out of the bullpen like a psycho. <laughs> it was you- clearly on steroids. Um... Do you remember Fernando Rodney? Uh, vaguely, yes. Uh, I I remember. I don't know if this is true. He, his you know his famous thing was he would do the bow and arrow after he would get a save, right? And I think it's because he was a uh, like a big like uh, what's it called like a spearfisher. So I think that's why he did it. Um, so he was just he was just spearing fish all day, and then he and then he strikes out a side and wins a game, and then he just spears you like a fish. Yeah, an expert with the bow and arrow and master fisherman, Mm -hmm. looks like. I'm trying to confirm this. I think we may have. He also wears his hat like a little bit cocked to the side. It's super cocky. I don't like that move from pitchers. I don't like when they do that. No? The slight tilt to the side. Mm -hmm. I like, there's other variations of fucking with your hat that I think are better. That's all I'm saying. It's not my favorite. Do any baseball players wear their hats backwards on the field? No, you are most certainly not allowed to. Really? Yeah. Like, King Griffey Jr. always did his, but not during the game. Like, if you're on the field and your hat's on backwards, I don't even think it's, like, a manner a manner of, like, unwritten rules. I think literally you're not allowed to do that. It's kind of dumb. You know how in golf there's, like, shit people don't do? You know, you wouldn't show up without a belt to the PGA Tour. You just wouldn't wear your hat backwards, like, for real, for real. I, 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 there's something, it's, like, disrespectful to the game or some shit. They're wearing joggers on the PGA Tour now. Yeah, Ricky Fowler's been wearing fucking, like, custom sneaker cleats for years now mm. at this point. 
Anyway, this episode of RBP is also brought to you by Cuts Clothing. Fellas, the sport of business means demanding excellence from your craft and wardrobe. Your fit needs to be versatile, blending timeless style and comfort so that you look as good as you feel. For that, there's Cuts Clothing. They've taken a classic men's fashion staple, the plain tee, and refined it. Combining premium quality with minimalistic aesthetic to make the greatest t-shirt of all time. Cut shirts, polos, hoodies, their crew sweatshirts are made for the man who works hard, plays hard, and never settles for less, all in the sport of business. B- y'all have seen me wearing these uh, for probably over a year now. On, on I put up pictures on Instagram, on Twitter. Cuts are phenomenal. I'm a huge t-shirt person. I love t-shirts. I wear t-shirts day in, day out. A few times a week now I'm wearing cuts, even during the winter when it was colder. They have these hoodies now that are phenomenal and very good looking and comfortable. Rocked those two. Cuts clothing is amazing. Built for performance in the boardroom, the bar, or the gym. Keeps you sharp wherever the game takes you. Take a plain tee, but make it Tony Stark. The bleeding edge of fabric technology meets the man confident enough to wear it. Cuts clothing. In 2016, their founder, Stephen Borelli, set out to create the perfect t-shirt, one that complemented every occasion, and the result was what GQ magazine calls the only shirt worth wearing. It's awesome. Go now to cutsclothing.com slash rbp. Entrepreneurs, mavericks, athletes, podcast hosts, everyone loves cuts. 15% off your first order when you go now to cutsclothing.com slash rbp. 15% off. Cutsclothing.com slash rbp. That's cutsclothing.com slash rbp for 15% off the only shirt worth wearing, Jared. Speaking of sports and the sport of business and Cancun. Which is where the uh, the plane crash was. It was. We tied it all together. Look at us. Ted Cruz continues dominant spree of suck. Truly incredible. So we're obviously in the midst of March Madness. And when we had one half of the Final Four go all Texas in the form of Baylor versus U of H, Ted Cruz decided he needed to cash in on the moment, so he posted a photo on Twitter showing him wearing both a Baylor Bears shirt and a Houston Cougars hat, put up some dumbass statement about having a niece or a cousin or some shit. It was pure pandering. Texas but it, wins no matter who wins. Texas wins no matter who wins. I'm Ted Cruz. And he fucking failed to pander, even. Because he's drinking in the photo. He's standing there like, I'm Ted Cruz. And he's drinking a Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Uh, last brought up uh, in 2000, probably four when Dave Chappelle did that skit about, what was it? Sam Adams. He made it into like a... Uh, it'll get you drunk. You don't remember this? No. You seen this? Have you heard about this? Uh, Sam Adams is one of the most irrelevant macro brews in America. We all grew up on those commercials. Oh, it was Samuel Jackson. Samuel oh. L. Jackson was the beer. It was a joke. It was the same Sam kind. Adams. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, you see, unbelievably irrelevant beer. I don't know anybody whoever is going to buy beer and has come back with the same. I've never, I've never, seen, never it. seen it. I've never seen it happen. I don't I don't know who would do that. That's the thing. This is their target demo. People who just don't have a fucking clue what they represent or what they're here for. I want to have a nice domestic macro brew. I'm going to get a Sam Adams, a nice cold Sam Adams to dribble down my chin. And I can see how his dumb ass was like, he's like, he's like, Jeff, bring me a beer. I want to look normal for the sports people. And Jeff's like, which kind, sir? And he's like, I don't know any. He's like, oh, hell. What's the one that was named after that politician? Samuel Adams. Bring me one of those, because it's the only fucking one he remembers. Uh-huh. I'm just going to assume that's short enough to not screw us, but that was from Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we... I kind of uh, like it. Yeah, we, we have to go and, and turn off the alerts every time. <laughs> every single time we record, we have to remember to do it now, because if somebody follows our page while we're recording, we get a soundbite. Yeah, because we're, we're recording the video through Streamlabs, which is yeah. the same thing Ross says Twitch from. Yeah, y'all can watch that on YouTube. Just search the Ross Boland podcast. Twitch.tv slash Boss Roland is where Ross plays video games. So this guy, Ted Cruz, like we've joked about this before, but he literally is everything that's wrong with America now. Like truly, everything that's wrong with America. He can't even do sports and beers right, man. And that's like our bread and butter here in the U.S. of A. Like if you can't do sports and beers, what the shit? Fucking Sam Adams? What could what would have been worse? What if he was holding like a Smirnoff Ice? <laughs> I would have respected that. See, I, at least that would have been funny trolling. I also Sam think Adams. What something you pointed out is like if he had said if he had come out and said, "I only drink beers at, named after politicians," that also would have been acceptable. Yes, but he didn't. He's just like I drink Sam Adams. Nobody drinks Sam Adams. No, I mean serial killers that are Ted Cruz. Well, the Zodiac killer. Yep. 
Was, it, was he the Zodiac Killer or is his dad the Zodiac Killer? His dad. Killer? His, it, but his dad killed JFK. Oh, yeah. And he's the Zodiac Killer. Oh, that's what, yeah. His dad killed JFK, according to President Trump. Just a truly prolific crime family, the Cruises. <laughs> yeah, it's scary because he's one of those guys where you're like, this guy's a total moron, but in actuality, he's pretty smart and cunning and he just looks like the stupidest jackass. And he likes trolling all of us with his buffoonery. You know he loves this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? You sent me, uh, so the the picture of this, Ross sent me to make the cover oh, photo of this Twitter episode. Twitter immediately wiped the, the TV from behind him and was like, go to town, folks, so that we can Photoshop whatever we want in, on his TV. You remember a few years back when he got caught liking that tweet from Pornhub? It was of a it woman. It was a very specific, like, step stepmom porn. Who looked exactly like his wife. That's yeah. That's the whole, the whole thing is that this he was he liked a tweet of a woman doing porn who looked exactly like his wife. Like very prominent porn stars. This wasn't like some obscure porn. It was it was very mainstream and Ted Ted he made the mistake of liking one of those on Twitter. This guy's just a weirdo. Like that's like yeah. that's for, it, it wasn't that he was watching that that was weird. Watching porn on Twitter is weird. He blamed it on his intern. <laughs> he did, which I did love that move. That's a great move. You can always That is do a good that. move. Also, I just I just love thinking, like, if I'm an intern for Ted Cruz, like, and I've got access to Ted's computer, am I going to watch porn and, and, and crank onto his keyboard? And the answer is probably yeah. Probably yeah. So what I'm going to do with that picture is I'm going to obviously put an RBP imagery as what he's watching. Maybe uh-huh. it's going to be a you and me, a YouTube-like thing. Yeah, I think it's you and me. But then I, I think like, somehow I need to, like, incorporate some Zodiac killer signs. Get some Zodiac signs in there, man. Let's become part of this whole Q thing, which, yeah. by the way... uh. I am going to finish Q into the storm. I am aware uh, that it concluded last night, and I'm aware that it seems to be a pretty definitive and, and jarring conclusion. Um, I cannot wait to uh, to be further convinced that that doofus with the glasses is, is, is Q and that millions and millions of people have been duped by just a random internet dork. Um, so I'm going to finish that tonight, and we'll probably discuss Wednesday. I don't think I'm going to be able to holster those takes, so I need to unleash them. Today, though, Jared Borislow is going to close out our show. J-Bomb. J-Bomb. I'm going to close my laptop. I don't even need this. No, you don't. I'm done. I want to close out today with a little behind the scenes into the podcast world for the RBP gang. Oh, wow. Yeah. Let's let's take a journey. I think people, if you let's listen to- Let's take a little to, trip together, shall we? We should. If you're listening to this podcast, you clearly have some interest in how podcasts work, so- I want to give you a little behind the scenes. If you've ever wondered how getting featured on Apple Podcasts and their charts works. Mm-hmm. I've maybe wondered. Maybe you have a podcast of your own. I do. Like Ross? I have one. Or you were just interested in the industry. Here's how they work. They take into account four main factors. The first one is the one that's really hard to get, and that's curation. So Apple Podcasts has actual people, employees, curating, curating lists yes. and such. Specific sections of Apple Podcasts like featured shows, new and noteworthy uh, right now, they have the Masters 2021. Get Oscars ready. I got to talk to those those good curators at one point back when Game of Thrones was at its peak, and mm-hmm. our TV and film podcast, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, which at the time was focused on Game of Thrones, was getting many millions of downloads. And they said, hey, we want to put you in this fucking carousel for best Game of Thrones podcasts. And I was like, I, that's tight. I'll name my firstborn after you. So now I have to name my firstborn after one of these random Apple curators, but it's cool. You could just name your firstborn Apple like Chris Martin did. I might be with that, like especially if it gets us on these charts. Apple bowling. Yep. Kind of like it. I, I kind of do too, sad, like weirdly, sadly. <laughs> Apple bowling. Apple bowling. So that's the first one. Really hard to get. Like you said, Ross had to do millions of downloads in order to get it for Game of Thrones. Millions and millions and millions yep. of downloads. We actually got the final spot on the Westworld one for season two of Westworld with FAMF. True enough. They did not reach out to me, though. That was like a pity one. Like, hey, here you go. <laughs> You're the last spot in the fucking carousel. <laughs> Let's give these two morons a spot. Yeah, look, we deserved it. We did. We did. So that's the first one, curation. Second one, listens. And that's just simply how many listens the show gets via Apple Podcasts. Huzzah. Pretty simple. The next one is the newness of the show. A newer podcast that has a decent amount of listeners on its initial episodes is way more likely to shoot up the ranks. Oh, yeah, baby. Because it used to be like top 30 in, uh, in comedy mm-hmm. when we first started just simply based off of the fact that we were brand new and able to build a listenership relatively quickly. Yeah, Apple Podcasts algorithm loves when shows bring over existing audiences onto their platform. So yes. they're like, here's the charting. You're number one. Look, what at, a- look at you. Promote Apple more. Yeah, FAMF, <laughs> FAMF was number two podcast in all of TV and film when we launched that in yep. 2017. Some of you may remember, if you're a longtime RVP listener. You may. There was an experimental podcast feed called Grand X Labs That's on which true. this very podcast began. It is true. 
The whole purpose of doing that was to game the algorithm and take advantage of this of this fact of coming on in, with an audience already, making you shoot up the charts. Yeah. And it worked. Like Ross said, you guys got really high. Comedy is probably the hardest thing to chart. It's in. one of them. There's a, there's a few categories that are really difficult. Comedy is one of the toughest because you have a – it's it's the most – Dominated by A-list celebrities yes. of any category, um, so you you know you know you're you're. It's that every single episode you put out chart wise is competing against fucking that dude who's married to that chick. Oh, you know, Amy Schumer, Shepard, Dax Shepard, Dax, 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 Dax Prescott, Dax, Dax, Dax Shepard, Dax, Dax Shepard, Dax Prescott. Yeah, yeah, comedy is really hard to rank in. Yes, it is. Um, and in our show, having been around for a few years now, like, and, and having a, a, you know, a lot of y'all have been here for a minute, you haven't done a review in a minute, or you could go update your review, or maybe you oh, never did a review. Ross, that brings me to the fourth one. Here's Jared. Okay. Like I Back said. Back to you, Jared. Back to you, Jared. There's curation, listens, newness of the show, and finally, ratings and reviews. Wow. These are the bread and butter of how a podcast like RBP charts on Apple Podcasts because we do a pretty consistent number of listens. It's very difficult to make it into a curated section and our show is many years old. So this right here is the only one we can really do nowadays. The fourth one. Yes. Which brings me to this. To this. If you want to see RBP make its way up the Apple Podcast charts, which helps get new eyes on the show, increases the chance we'll make it into a curated section and shows to your friends that the podcast you listen to is tight as hell. Hey. Please, right now, unless you're driving a motor vehicle, in which case, pull over, go to Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review, and write a, a five-star rating and a helpful review. Yeah, write a few sentences about why you like the show, why you think other people might like it. Five stars, and it'll take you 30 seconds. You know, pull over, take the 30 seconds, your kids are screaming in the back seat, Daddy, what the fuck, we're almost home. No, tell them, shut up, Daddy's busy, he's doing a review for RBP. We always Thank prefer you. reviews to be funny, but it's most important that they be helpful and capable of convincing someone to get over the hump and check out RBP. Imagine this, a dude's like, oh, RBP, that's a cool, I got a cool mugshot, looks like an interesting show, let me check out the reviews, and the review's not helpful, he's like- Because it's an inside joke? Yeah, yeah, that's not it, don't do that, don't make it an inside joke. That ain't joke. it, chief. That ain't it, chief. Here's, here's a little challenge, Ross. We okay. currently have 7,295 ratings, which is awesome. Great. But we want to get that number to 7,500 as fast as we can. So Tim Apple and Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos think, yeah. we're, think we're tight as hell. That's what I'm for. Yes. Especially Tim Apple. I want Bezos. You want Bezos? I'm big on his shiny head. It's really, really... It's because he put so much Burt's Bees on it. That's why he's Jeff Bezos. Bezos. So please stop what you're doing. Bees. Rate and review. We would love to get to 7,500. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the show. We will be back on Wednesday, as we always are, Monday, Wednesday, and then Friday on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. This past Friday's episode was another uh, phenomenally fun one. That's how I would- It came out on Saturday. Review it. It was Saturday. It was Saturday, indeed. The schedule got a little wonky last week, but but it was phenomenally fun. Very fun. We took hotline calls. We did. Uh, we also talked about DMX quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Still on life support, apparently, and prayers and shouts to X and hope he pulls through. Still. Uh, but we talked about DMX in his career quite a bit. We took four hotline calls and responded to them that took us in all manner of directions conversation-wise, but it was a blast. Y'all go enjoy on Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast, and Jared and I will be back on Wednesday. Adios! Bye-bye. 